to the diary. <coughs> <coughs> Perhaps I should start again. Forget it! The diary. It is the 16th of March 2018. Who done it? What's the bloke's name? Sergio somebody? Russian guy and his daughter poisoned with some sort of nerve agent traced to the Russians, all fingers pointing at Russia. But we need to use our logic, people, <laughs> because they haven't conclusively proved it. And we cannot possibly analyse their evidence and decide for ourselves. So in order for us to know, we need to use a bit of logic. And let's look at the behaviour of these nations that we're talking about. The UK, the nation I live in, acts like it's the, you know, the goody-goody, teacher's pet, do everything right. Yet, are we so good? I didn't think so. I mean, we make a lot of arms and weapons. You know, we make things that are designed to take lives and destroy things. I don't think that's very good. We happily sell loads of stuff to Saudi Arabia because we're desperate for money and we love their money. Yet their human rights records are worse than Russia's. And why, you know, I've mentioned in videos before, why are they hating on Russia so much? You know, are we supposed to believe that Russia is just evil? I can remember about 15 years ago, something like that, Russians queuing up to get a bit of bread. They were broke. They were nearly ruined. Putin came along and he's helped them out, so why wouldn't they vote for him? And they keep making accusations, false accusations. They keep saying that Russia took Crimea by force. They didn't do it by force. They had a referendum. Crimea at the time, they didn't even have power. So their government in Kiev weren't helping them out, weren't even supplying them with electricity. And the Russians, they had to sort that out. So I'm not surprised that the referendum, the vote went to Russia. And they're just trying to blame everything on Russia. Who hates Russia? I mean, the UK certainly publicly voice that they hate Russia. But if you go back, I mean, to the last Tsar, was practically related to the English royal family. They're very good friends. Look. Something, you know there's something dodgy under the surface. And my gut tells me it's Europe. And that's mainly Germany and I suppose the old club of Rome. The EU is run by the European Commission basically. And they're unelected. Completely unelected. And they dare to criticise... Russia's democracy, okay, so Putin has wangled it so that he could be the Prime Minister and then the President and then the, you know, he jingled the rules a bit to, to stay in power, but I think that was a popular move because I think the Russians were very grateful to Putin because they were in such a bad state. I mean, I've never been to Russia. I'd like to visit. They have a lot of nature. The people are into nature, seems to me. And that's a good thing. And um, this is making me think of Demolition Man. You know, a lot of the predictions in Demolition Man have come true. Apart from the three seashells toilets. A lot of things are uh, quite realistic, or what they sort of predicted in the future. And I kind of see the Russians 
as the underground people in Demolition Man. The people who still wanted to live real. Eat rat burgers and drink beer, but... Do you know what I mean? They were still real, they still had passion and personality. Whereas everyone was like, just totally fake. Salutations! And underneath the surface, the leader, you know, he's practically evil. But back to the real world. <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's just very, very dodgy. And I think this is an EU thing. And I think that Britain has had to, to do this before, you know, Brexit finally happens. This is one of the, the underground deals that uh, our Prime Minister has had to agree to. Because um, they want to fuck up Russia bad. And who wants to do it? I think, I think the EU want to do it. Basically, club around Germany. They're like the beast. And their, their power is crumbling away and they're desperate. And they're de yeah, desperate to do crazy things. Like, basically try and start World War Three. Um, because, like, you've got to look at motive. Why would... Russia do that at this time. And there's been loads of things back in the past, you know, stuff with Syria, that someone comes out and accuses Russia. Um, the evidence is there, pointing at Russia, obviously, but it's not conclusive. And, you know, whatever Syria is about, you know, they obviously don't like Assad because he's not sort of falling over and letting them walk all over him. There was some sort of, you know, whether they want some sort of oil transportation pipelines or whatever, whatever it is that the EU wants, the EU, Europe wants to be this superpower, <coughs> superpower and, you know, just control everything. It's, you know, it's all corruption and power, basically. So, this is, this is my feelings, this is what I think. Um, you know, I, I think the Russians are good people. I don't think they're evil. I don't think they're evil at all. And then, you know, their, their government might not be perfect and that, but you know, this, I just uh, don't believe they're evil whatsoever. I think the EU is evil. You look at the things they do with CERN and pharmaceuticals, chemicals. You know, they're, they're the, the screwed up ones. They're screwed up. So, I wanted to get my two cents of opinion over. Um, yeah. So let me just sort of say what I think may have happened. You know, this nerve agent that Russia is known to have made. Uh, could, they said, you know, there, was, there could have been some left over in Ukraine. Someone might have been holding on to it for a while, as people do, if they see something that they think could be useful in the future, you know, they might well hold on to it. Or apparently it degrades. But anyway, perhaps the just the uh, ingredients or whatever, you need to know how to make it. I mean... Europe would be very capable of that, wouldn't be a problem. And they, you know, this guy's daughter comes over from Moscow the day before, I don't know, like, why they chose them or whatever, right right in the Salisbury, right, Salisbury Plains is where, you know, the, the army trains, it's, it's where their officers' academy is, you know, right under the nose, basically. 
of these officers and um, and did this in order to then point fingers at Russia, make a big big deal out of it, sack a load of their diplomats, just just to increasingly sort of isolate Russia as this bad guy. Sort of classic bullying tactics, isn't it? This gang up on uh, gang up on Russia. So, you know, because the the way they're talking at the press at the moment, it's like stuff's coming out about the Litvinenko guy who was poisoned with radiation. And he was, uh, you know, a spy. But he got, he initially got poisoned uh, somewhere else and then came back into England. Um, you know, and, but what stuff say, they've been saying about that is, um, apparently the guy who investigated this Litvinenko case and found it was one of either two Russians, Apparently he was mysteriously killed. Now, I don't remember hearing anything about that on the news at the time. Um, so either they covered it up, or, I don't know, like, the woman who was saying this, apparently she's been collating information on suspicious deaths of people linked with Russia. And this Sergio guy, his um, son and... Some other, a couple of other family members have died mysteriously, and she's been doing this list. And the interviewer never asked at any stage, you know, did she fear for her own life? Looking at, you know, you think you would, wouldn't you, if you believed that these people were getting knocked off suspiciously, and you're now reporting it and stuff like that. You think you might fear for your own life, but. She didn't seem to, there didn't seem to be any of that, that question wasn't even asked. And, you know, the BBC's having a go at RT. Now, I've seen RT, I, st I unsubscribed from them cause, just because it was just too much. But, you know, they're just, as, they're just as biased as the BBC are. So, you've got the BBC, the World Service, you know, we report the news all around the world. But they are bias. They are bias. So why wouldn't, if RT's coming out, why wouldn't RT be bias? Because, you know, if someone else is being biased and that's negative towards you, you know, you're going to want to defend yourself a bit. And probably the easiest way to do that is to be slightly over bias. But... You know, when you hear what they say, and, like, you'll see a lot of the people on the BBC, this Russia stuff, they're getting emotional about it. You know, they're not, they're not just stating the evidence and saying this is what it is. <coughs> they're getting emotional and angry about it. Whereas RT, they're usually pretty much, you know, here's the evidence, da-da-da-da-da, and that's it. So... Yeah, I, I think they're making a very convincing case that Russia is the bad guy. And that's probably why I want to make this video, not that it'll do anything. But, you know, it's, it's right to analyse things properly and, and um, you know, not just believe your own country because obviously... That's the country you live in. But that's exactly why you should try and figure out for yourself what it is. You know, imagine if you had been a German in 1935. And, you know, you just fall into the Nazi regime because that's what's going on. And, it'll ben and it benefits you. Because, obviously, everybody, you know... Lives, needs to live in their own country, they need to go and buy stuff in their own shops and you know that can have an effect on the quality of your life and how you feel it. But what's more important is, is you know if you're 
like on the good side or on the bad side. Because if you feel like, yep, yeah, I'm on the good side, then you can fight for your good side strongly and de defend it. But if you think you might be on the bad side, well then you sh should not help them. And, and that's right. And I'm glad Jeremy Corbyn has remained sceptical. Um, hopefully the truth about this could come out. I mean, imagine if the truth comes out, right? And they say, oh, it's this, you know, there was CIA involvement or there was uh, MI5 involvement or... What is the German Secret Service? We just assume they haven't got one. That's quite an assumption to make, isn't it? You know, especially considering their past. Two world wars, right? Who said that, you know, who said there hasn't been a, an element of that which didn't carry on? Who says the Germans haven't got a secret service? So perhaps they're so secret we don't know about them, right? So imagine if that comes out, that it wasn't the Russians who did this guy over. It could, it could happen, and they just wouldn't say much about it at all. It could get swept under the carpet, as other things have been. And life would carry on, and people would get on with it, and then six months later they try some other dodgy stuff again. So... So, I just think you've got to think about motive, you know, intention is everything. Who gains? Who gets to gain from this? In my eyes, it's Europe. I think they're worried about Russia. They're, on the, they're bordering with Russia. They haven't got much of a defence force of their own. Britain's leaving. The European Union aren't getting on with the, the Americans very well, you know, Trump and Trump does not like the EU. So I think they're the ones who get to gain. I think they're scared. I think they want their security. So in a sense, having a little tussle with Russia, and they've got France, Germany, UK and America all on one side of this, have a little tussle with them, test what they're going to do, we got Russian elections on Sunday. You know, they would probably love to sort of uh, even just reduce Putin's majority. I mean, they'll just claim that. It's fake. They go, it's not a democracy. What, 92%? Yeah, right. Well, it might be because he pulled them out of complete and utter poverty. Anyway. That's what I think. So that'll do. Okay, bye.